بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا بفضلك علما وتعليما إنك على كل شيء قدير Okay, so now we're going to look at conditions of slaughter I'm not going to talk about other food besides meat uh, because this is just a super introductory uh, um, uh, class and meat is the most kind of practical thing to deal with So general conditions of Islamic slaughter for meat to be halal it has to be slaughtered by a Muslim a Jew or a Christian a B we have to sl sl uh, cut the uh, four veins slash the arteries uh, the trachea and the esophagus see if we are hunting an animal then we have to uh, and we're using animals to hunt then we need to use a trained animal you can't just use anything not just any any animal that kills another animal. It has to be a trained animal. D, if you're hunting, are we going to have to use... Uh, 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 there are certain weapons we can use, something that are debated. And E, we should say bis bismillah, uh, bismillah when we slaughter. In the name of God. Okay. And so it says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an... And the food of those who are given the scripture before you is permissible for you. The, uh, the Ahl Kitab, the Jews and the Christians. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in the Quran, they ask you what has been made permissible for them. Say all wholesome things, tayyibat, have been made permissible. As has, and this is added here in the game animal, uh, game killed by those hunting animals that you have taught what Allah has taught you, right? that you've trained. Eat of what they catch for you and mention Allah's name over it. Ward off Allah's punishment because Allah is indeed very fast to bring to account. And in Abu Dawood and uh, others mentioned that the Prophet said, Eat from, uh, from whatever you slaughter with a tool that causes the blood to flow. So we have to use something sharp that cuts the throat, as opposed to uh, stunning or bullet to the head or something like that. And in Sahih Muslim, if you shoot with a head uh, with a headless and fletchingless arrow, a mi'rad, and it penetrates the target, then eat it. But if it hits it with its broad edge, then don't eat it. So notice there's conditions there. It's got a cut as opposed to knock the animal out. It, like a club, if you clubbed an animal to death, right, or strangled an animal to death, you couldn't eat it. It has to cut. So the difference with hunting and not hunting is where do you cut? And when you're hunting an animal, you do not have to. It does not have to cut the throat. You just has to hit the animal and hit the animal and cut the animal. But but it, it but but simply like clubbing the animal to death, uh, that doesn't count. Or you're having a, an animal run off a cliff, for example, chasing an animal off a cliff. That wouldn't make it halal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, do not eat of that which Allah's name has not been mentioned upon it. Right? So you have to say, in the name of God, you have to say, Bismillah, something like that. Now, there's some issues here. Again, this is just introductory, so we're not going to go into detail. Jews and Christians. There are There is some debate here. There's some debate here. Why? Because it's narrated that Umar ibn Khattab, he said the Arab Christians are not, quote, people of the book, and we cannot eat their meat. So the question here is, is it that they are Jews and Christians, or is it they are originally Jews and Christians? So here these Arab Christians, Sayyidina Umar, wallahu alam, is referring to Arabs, right? There were Christian Arabs before the Prophet, وسلم, and during the time of the Prophet, and afterwards, but he's referring to Arabs who were atheists, or who, sorry, p pagans, and became Christian, or who were Muslims and became Christian. So, these people are not people of the book. They're, they're not originally people of the book. And so, we cannot eat their meat. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, do not eat the meat of Christians of, of Bani Taghlib. Same thing, these are, I believe, in the Levant. Bani Taghlib, this tribe of uh, the, of, uh, of the Arabs, they they didn't become Muslim; they became Christians, but they weren't originally Christians. 
And so do not eat their meat, right? And by analogy, do not marry their, their women. So there's a, there's a question, right? Certain ulama, the Shafis, for example, they make, they say, for, in order for a Jew or a Christian to be considered a Jew or a Christian, they have to be an originally a Jew or Christian. Not somebody who converts to Christianity or someone whose forefathers converted. What it means is, here are these descendants, for example, they went to Egypt. The Muslims arrived in Egypt or in the Levant. They arrived and there's a majority Christian area. These are, so now, could you marry these women? Yes. Could you eat their meat? Yes. Okay, but what about, for example, South America or uh, certain areas even in Europe that weren't Christian at that time, right? Certain areas in Northern Europe, for example, Scandinavia, they became Christian about one or two centuries after the dawn of Islam. So these people were not originally Christians and Jews. And so therefore you cannot eat their meat. So that's an issue of debate. <clears throat> Similarly, when we say the four veins, such arteries and the trachea the, uh, and the esophagus, exactly what has to be think is an issue of debate. Is it all of them, most of them, the just the four veins and not the trachea and, and the esophagus? Is it? Uh, it's an issue of debate. So, uh, you know, uh, the details of this we have to study uh, in details. But again, it's an issue of debate. Exactly what has to be cut? But generally, talking about is the throat being slit. slit. If you, somebody slits someone's throat, normally this is what happens. Right. This is what's happening. Is that you are cutting the veins and arteries that go to the, take the, the blood to and from the brain. And so you're stopping oxygen to the brain or you're stopping oxygen per itself by uh, the, the trachea that the animal cannot breathe anymore. Now, similarly, uh, the issue of uh, a gun. So when you're hunting today, we're going to use a gun. So is a gun a valid way of hunting? So again, we go back to the hadith and it says, but if it hits with its broad edge, then do not eat. So when, let's say, for example, using a shotgun, does a shotgun explode or does a shotgun uh, uh, cut? Right? Or even a bullet. Is a bullet, like how, how is it actually penetrating? So notice it says it penetrates. So there's the idea of cutting as opposed to hitting. So some ulama, some they say, no, uh, a, bu a bullet is analogous to a spear. It's the same thing. And some ulama say, no, it's not. So it is an issue of debate. The bismillah as well is an issue of debate. The majority of the ulama, they say yes, the verse is very clear, etc. And, you know, they might say it's excused if you did it accidentally or this and that and that. But they said the default is a Muslim or a Jew or anybody, they have to say bismillah. That's the default. However, certain scholars, again, namely the Shafi'is, they say no, uh, saying the bismillah is not a condition. Because here we find this in Bukhari and others, that the Messenger of Allah was asked, O Messenger of Allah, people i.e. new Muslims, these bring us meat, and we can't figure out whether or not they mentioned Allah's name. Right? And uh, uh, and the Prophet says, you say Allah's name on, on it and eat it. Now this is a very important hadith. Because if we say, if we say that saying Bismillah is a condition, then this hadith seems to be like very relaxed. It's like, oh, like if the conditions aren't there, then don't worry about it. But Imam Shafi is saying, well, this tells us there's not a condition. Right? Because it is neither, it's neither, neither the default. What is the default? That they say Allah's name or not? Default is they don't. And is it dhahir? Is it like that's what's normally the case? If that was normally the case, why would they ask? Like, we don't know. It's genuine doubt. Like, we don't know if they know about these issues. Right? So we can either interpret this hadith to say, oh, it's the default, and that was the kind of the widespread thing, so therefore it wasn't a big issue. Or we can say, no, it's not even a condition to begin with. And that's what Imam Shafi says. Imam Shafi says, look, it's not, it, it's, it, you can't, it's not something that was zahir, that was like, oh yeah, this is kind of normally the case. And this is hadith establishes that you do not have to say Bismillah, period. In fact, even if you did it intentionally, I intentionally didn't say Bismillah, 
uh, it, it would it would be fine. So it's an issue of debate. So in terms of what's agreed upon then is if we have a Muslim that says Bismillah and slaughter cuts every single thing and hunts with an arrow, for example, right? But let's say most of the time we're talking about these three things. Here we have a Muslim. Okay, forget the whole issue about Jews and Christians. I can't be bothered. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna deal with that. Do with that, right? Let's say, for example, I sell meat, right? And people are always asking, well, what kind of Jews and Christians are they? What kind? It's like forget it. I'm not gonna do it. What is agreed upon and very clear? Muslims. Here is a Muslim, and he slaughtered an animal. He said Bismillah, and he cut all of these things. Bismillah. Great. This is very clear, right? Or he hunted, right? And he shot with an arrow or a spear or something like that. Totally fine. So those are, that's our overview of the conditions of how to make a, a living animal halal to eat. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi sallam. Subhanallah wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka.